Double love. I can't see you, but can I hear you? Ah, all right, all right, all right. I want to take just a quick moment to give honor to whom honor is due. I want to take time to thank God. Thank him for allowing me to be here tonight to the pastors of this great church. <laughs> pastors Gabby, Pastor Andrew, um, who I have the privilege of calling friends. Thank you so much for having me. To my fellow preachers and my husband who drove me here today. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So my task this evening is to share some words on the fifth principle of Kwanzaa. Nia, which translated from the Kiswahili means purpose. And here is the definition that Kwanzaa's founder, Milana Ron Karenga, offers. Nia, to make our collective vocation, the building and developing of our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. As I reflected on what it means to build and develop our community, as I reflected on what it means to restore our people to their traditional greatness, I was led to the book of Nehemiah, the second chapter. And I'm going to read for your hearing tonight, verses 17 and 18. Then I said to them, you see the distress that we are in? How Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me, and also of the king's words he, that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. For the remainder of my time this evening, I want to reflect on the thought, rise up and build. When my son was about a year and a half, my husband and I noticed that he wasn't quite where he needed to be for his age. We were concerned that he wasn't meeting his developmental milestones, and so we spoke with his pediatrician, had him evaluated, and eventually put the therapeutic services that would support his growth and development. As you can imagine, this was a difficult time for us as we struggled to find ways to engage our son. Our son had no interest in the many toys and games that kids his age were into. So we spent a lot of time trying to find the activities that he would enjoy. After searching and searching, let me tell you, church, we finally found it. Legos. Legos. My son loves Legos. When we first bought the Legos for him, he would sit for hours and just build. He would build these tall structures, and in the beginning, he was devastated when the structures fell. But then he realized something, pastors. He realized that he could pick them up and build again. So then it became a game because he's a boy. So he would build these structures, knock them down on purpose, crack up laughing, and then build again. One day my daughter came to me and she was so upset. She said, Mommy, AJ is going to destroy all of the Legos. He's just letting them crash to the floor. Mommy, I think the Legos are going to break. I said to her, I said, Nala, okay, it's all right, baby. Calm down. The Legos are not going to break. They were made for this. You see, when the creators designed the Legos, they designed them for one purpose, to build. So even after they have fallen, even after they've been knocked down, we don't have to worry about them breaking because Legos were designed to build and not break. All we have to do is pick them up and build again. Church, what I stopped by to tell you tonight is that I believe that it's the same thing with us. 
when God designed us, God designed us with Nia. God designed us with purpose. God designed us in such a way that even if we fall, even if we get knocked down, even after we hit the ground, we will not break. Like Legos, we can build again. How many of you know that that's good news? That's good news. That's good news for anyone who's ever been knocked down. That's good news for anyone who's ever fallen. Falling does not mean that it's over. Falling does not mean that you're broken. All you have to do is remember your purpose. Remember what you're made of. Remember that you are designed to not break. Pick yourself up and build again. We are designed to build and not break. This, this right here is precisely the message that Nehemiah is trying to get the people of God to understand in our text. After years of living in Babylonian captivity, the people of God returned from exile to find the walls of Jerusalem in ruins. This presented a serious problem because without walls, the people were vulnerable. Without walls, the people were unsafe. Without walls, the people were unprotected. Nehemiah heard about the condition of Jerusalem and made the decision to come back, organize the people, and rebuild the wall. Now, there are just two, two quick things that I want to highlight about this text. I'm going to connect them to the principle of Nia, and then I'm going to move out the way for Kaumba. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. So first, Nehemiah recognized that rebuilding was his responsibility. When he heard about the walls in Jerusalem, he didn't wait for somebody else to step up. He didn't wait for FEMA to respond. He didn't wait for the Red Cross to show up. He didn't say, well, that's not my job. Why can't someone else do it? Nehemiah recognized that it was his responsibility, his Nia, his purpose to rebuild what was broken in his community. Family, it is our responsibility to rebuild what is broken in our communities. We cannot afford to wait for someone else to come in and rebuild the broken structures, the broken systems that are affecting the lives of our people. We can't wait for someone else to come in and rescue us. We can't wait for somebody else to come into our community and rebuild the broken education system. We can't wait for somebody else to decide that it's important to rebuild the broken criminal justice system. We can't wait for someone else to come in and rebuild the immigration system. We can't wait for someone else to come in and rebuild the broken health care system. With all of these broken structures around us, our people are vulnerable. Our people are unsafe. Our people are unprotected. And it is our Nia, our purpose our responsibility to rebuild what is broken in our community. It's not anybody else's job, not anybody else's responsibility. It is our responsibility. Nehemiah understood his purpose. And when you understand your purpose, when you understand that you've been called for a purpose, you are not going to wait for someone else to come in and do what God is calling you to do. As I think about this, I think about pastors Gabby and Andrew. They didn't wait for somebody else to come in and build their vision. That's the first thing. The, the second thing that I, I want to point out is that when Nehemiah returned to Jerusalem, he realized that rebuilding the wall was just one part of his assignment. As a matter of fact, rebuilding the wall, rebuilding the broken structure was the easy part. 
the more difficult task would be rebuilding the people. Years of, syst of systemic oppression had left the people broken. Years of captivity had taken its toll. Years of being told by the predominant culture that they weren't good enough. They weren't smart enough. They weren't beautiful enough. Their lives didn't matter enough. Their hair wasn't straight enough. Their skin wasn't light enough. Years of having to be told this every day. Years of this had worn the people of God down and they were broken. But how many of you know that just because we are living with a broken structure doesn't mean that we are broken. Just because the education system is broken doesn't mean that I'm not intelligent. Just because the criminal justice system is broken doesn't mean that our lives don't matter. Just because the political system is broken doesn't mean that our voice and our vote don't count. Just because the systems and structures, and structures are broken doesn't mean that we are a broken people. When Nehemiah goes back to Jerusalem, he realizes that his purpose, his purpose is bigger than rebuilding the wall. If his people were going to be restored to their traditional greatness, then it wasn't enough to rebuild the structure. He needed to build up the people so that the structure would last. Family, it's not enough to rebuild the broken structures in our community. That's just the first part. Part of our purpose is to rebuild our people. For years, we have had to survive with broken structures. But just because we are living with broken structures doesn't mean that we are broken. We're not broken people, we're strong people. We're resilient people. We are a people designed by our creator to build and not break. If we are going to restore our people to their traditional greatness, it is time to rise up and build. I know, I know, I know. We are living with broken structures all around us. But let me tell you, just like the Legos, we can build again. One of the things that I've noticed about Legos is that one Lego in the larger structure may seem small and insignificant. But let me tell you, if you remove just one Lego, it completely changes the entire structure. Family, I I'm on my way to my seat, but, but I want to leave you with this. If we are going to rebuild the broken structures in our community, if we are going to restore our people to their traditional greatness, everyone has a part to play. Everyone must be operating in their Nia. Everyone must decide today that they are going to live into their purpose. Because if just one person is not doing what God is calling them to do, it changes the entire structure. So let's take our lesson and our cues from the Legos. Let us rise up and build. Now I'm going to tell you it's not going to be easy because as we begin to rebuild the broken structures all around us, there may come a time where we fall. But like I said in the beginning of this sermon, we are designed to build and not break. We come from a long line of people who knew how to build even after being knocked down. We come from a long line of people. 